listening to the Prevailing Faith Broadcast, a podcast in Christ, with Pastor Charles E. Brown of the Prevailing Faith Bible Church in Monroe, Louisiana. Now, here's your host, Pastor Brown. Well, praise the Lord. What a privilege and honor it is to come before you once again on air, on Spreaker Radio. Give a shout out to my loved ones that, that are listening to us on YouTube, Facebook. We thank you for being a part of what God opened a door for us to do. And just want to remind you now, this is live. So if you can, you can go to Spreaker and uh, give your email, and then we can chat live, because I'd love to hear from you. Um, but I understand if you just want to listen, so I'm thankful of that, and I'm certainly thankful for those of you that have been downloading all over the world. So it's amazing how little of us in Monroe, Louisiana, can reach everybody all over the world. As you know, I'm from Prevailing Faith Bible Church right here at 1111 Plaza Boulevard in Monroe, Louisiana, 71201. Yes, once again, it's your host, Pastor Charles E. Brown. Let's invite God the Father into this program because I need need to hear from him and so do you. So, Father, what an honor and a privilege it is to open up our spirit, soul, and body to you, to be reminded that everything starts with you, that you gave us life, you gave us the opportunity, you gave us the privilege that we could accept you as our personal Lord and Savior, and that you have sent us your awesome, glorious spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is in the heart of every born-again believer. And that strength and that power is that access to us So, Father, we just come and yield our heart and our soul to you, that we might be obedient to you, that we would trust the leadership of your powerful word and your spirit as we welcome you into this session. Because we remember the lips of the righteous will feed many. So, Father, by faith in the name of Jesus, I turn over these lips of clay to you that you would have your way, that I would say exactly what you have me to say, that it will drive men and women to you, that the hearts of men will be open to receive the word and the spirit of God in the glorious, majestic, awesome name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We say amen, 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 amen. Well, if you can see the title of today's intimacy session, yes, I'm, I'm still talking about intimacy, because intimacy is a peculiar word in that it represents a close, familiar, or uh, personal relationship, which you can have with God, you can have with uh, others, uh, your parents, your siblings, your neighbor, you can have a very intimate relationship. But we're working on the part of that word that applies to a husband and wife. And for a husband and wife, not only are you close spirit, soul, but you can join your bodies together in having a Holy Ghost filled sexual relationship because you're married under the unction of God. And so what I'm attempting to do, I'm coming from a place of uh, appreciation, really, because I truly appreciate the fact that God came in and saved my marriage because I was immature when I got married. Cause that's what tickles me is that people get married. They do all kind of stuff, preparing for the wedding and what you should. I, 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 like I said, I, uh, I was, I was, I was, I got to officiate a beautiful wedding. I got to attend a beautiful wedding, but you got to plan for the marriage, not just the wedding. Plan for the marriage. 
Why? Because you're going to have to learn how to work on it spiritually. You have to learn how to work on it mentally. And you're definitely going to have to learn how to work it physically. And because the reason I'm telling you all this or reminding you all this is because God has a plan. He knows what he's doing. We don't. (laughs) <laughs> and so we go jump off in the marriage and we say, man, this water is deep. <laughs> I did not know. And then you start trying to tread and trying to stay afloat and you realize, help. <laughs> Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. <laughs> but what I'm so thankful for, he will help you. Because if you remember this simple fact, God is the creator of marriage. God is the only one that knows how to make a marriage work. And if you have issues or troubles in your marriage, learn how to go to God because he will give you supernatural inside information. So you'll know how to prosper in your marriage. You know how to grow in your relationship. You can walk as the kings and queens of God that God call you to be. But if you turn to Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15, you'll see where I got this message from. The little things. Because one of the key things you got to learn to remember is very important with the little things you do in the marriage. Because sometimes it's the little things that can just take you off course. You can be on the train track going uh a thousand miles, but then somebody or something wear and tear, whatever, the track becomes offset and the train's been going for thousands of miles. And when it gets to its destination, it hits a broken part of the track because you got to pay attention to the little things. And that's what this scripture reminds me of. Song of Solomon, chapter two, verse 15, King James Version. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. In other words, you're depending on the harvest you get from a a grape orchard. And at the times when the grapes are just coming out, the little foxes come and destroy your crop. Now, you've worked real hard because I've had a chance to visit uh, uh, wineries or vintage vintage, uh, uh I've been to California several times and I've been in the in the um in the Bay Area and right outside of the Bay Area is where they have a lot of orchards. And um you see these these fields or acres of vineyards out there. And it takes a lot of work to care for them, to properly sustain them, and you don't want to lose your crop just when it's about time to to harvest, because that's what the little foxes would do. It will steal from the harvest before the the grapes are ready for you to pull them. And the complete English version says it like this, catch foxes for us, those little foxes that spoil vineyards, vineyards, now that our vineyards are in bloom. You've got to pay attention in marriage. You've got to be able to watch what you say to each other. You got to take in consideration that what you're saying, it will either increase or hinder the relationship. So you got to be very careful as to how you approach each other. Because remember, if God thinks so much of your word, he told Daniel in Daniel 10 and 12, he says, the Lord says, I come for your words. He says, I come for them for the first day. In other words, your words can help your marriage or your words can destroy your marriage. So you have to make a decision. I am going to make sure that I say things that's going to bring about the blessings, to bring about encouragement, to open up the door that the light of the gospel of the living God will come into my marriage because I want it to work. I didn't go through all this ceremony. I didn't go through uh, giving up my name or giving up my living quarters. Or (laughs) We laughed because um, when we got married over 40 years ago, 
and we went on the honeymoon. We come back, the little apartment that we had picked was damaged, a storm or something. I don't remember what it was. And um, they didn't have an apartment she liked, so it gave her time to say, well, look, I want one in the front. So I said, hey, look, I'm just glad you married me, so I'm just long for the ride. And so, so we stayed with my mother for about almost two months. But I'm so glad when I left my mama's house <laughs> and moved my wife into our own place where we can kick and scream, holler and roll and tumble and do whatever we wanted to do because it was our place. But one of the key things you need to hear, if you're going to allow your spirit to connect spiritually with somebody, when you're going to include your mind and your body with somebody, you need to learn to respect them. You need to be careful what you say and how you treat them because you want God to grow your marriage. And one of the most significant places that you, that can just, a, you could say just the little things, um, you could say something about his mother and he's real sensitive about it. Or you could say something about, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> you knew when he asked you to marry you that he had a past. And in that past included other children or even an ex-wife or whatever, but you decided to accept his, his invitation to marriage. Well, when you accepted that invitation, you also were willing to accept his children and accept the relationship that he has with his ex. I'm talking about a respectful relationship because um, I know I know uh, a young lady and, uh, you know, she introduced me to her father and her mother, but she later told me that they're both married to different people. I don't know why they split up, but they did. Her parents split up and they married other people. And this is how well they get along. They love their daughter so much that they even became friends with each other's spouses. Now, I tell you what, that's, that's heavy. And <laughs> my wife left me and she lived through it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to hurt my wife. But if she left me, I'd find it hard to be happy to see her with paid... <laughs> with Pedro or uh, uh, Sibidi Sam, but they have learned to mature that, hey, our marriage didn't work. We love our daughter, and we're going to love her, and we're going to... You know, the daughter's an adult now, but they get along fabulously. They don't even go on trips together. I'm like, oh, my God. I tell you what, they took that thing a whole dimension about Releasing and forgiving others. Oh, my gracious, precious God. Look at my dear friend in the Lord, Pastor Dennis Stephen Hamilton. Good evening to you, my brother, all the way in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. He says in Acts chapter 5, now remember the reason. I believe in God to point this out to you. Because if you would get a better understanding of this, this will help you. I mean, go to Acts chapter 1. Because if you would learn how to labor your mouth and how you speak to each other, it will give you an opportunity for you to grow. Because um, if you pay attention to what God says, the word accord means agreement. And that's where you come into agreement. And it's significant that a husband and wife agree. And I, I'm not going to tell you. But it's not, it's going to be easy because you have an adversary that's out there trying to break up what God has put together. You know, as I said, I believe it was last week or during the session, you've obeyed God. You married the woman or the man of God, God called you to. You had a supernatural wedding, but all of a sudden as the marriage is growing and you're trying to go somewhere, you're going like, well, Lord, what is wrong? Where? Where have I missed it? And the flesh has the tendency to blame the other spouse. But this is a challenge I have for you with God. You go to God what, to find out what you should change. Because I had to do this for me. 
You know, because I learned this, I guess God's wisdom, when I first got married, I wasn't even saved. If she did something I didn't particularly like, but I liked it done, I would go ahead and do it. And then that way I wouldn't complain so much about it. Uh, if uh, she liked to run it out of gas and call me to fill it up, well, instead of fussing at her about it, I'd just go fill the car up. If, uh, yeah, this one, this is one that did happen. Uh, we had, uh, we have a mutual, we had a mutual checking account when we first got married. And she would not always tell me when she wrote a check. And I'm the one trying to balance the book. And so I'm writing checks, she writing checks. Next thing I know, the account is, it didn't necessarily go over, I, I'm looking for more money in it. Then it was there, but she, she 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 just forgot to tell me. So the way we worked it out is you have your account, I have mine. You can sign on my account, I can sign on yours, but I respect you. You spend your money the way you want to. I spend mine the what needs to be necessary. Now, we work together. I mean, yeah, uh, the house note is paid. If there's a house note, the car notes are paid or whatever it is. But uh, for us to... Working together, we had to be in accord. We have to be in agreement. So as I was looking through this, and God reminded me of this, that the little things can bring you together, or the little things can push you apart. Because I started looking at the word one accord. Because it's very significant, especially in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, because the short version is that, because, you know, Pentecost Sunday is coming up June 5th. But they had just witnessed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, being murdered, being humiliated. And then he came back. So there's a great joy, like, okay, well, maybe it's not as bad as we think. But he came back and he spent, I've forgotten, I don't want to say 40 days. He spent days with the disciples and the children of God. And he told them to go up into the upper room and pray. Because he had some, he had an increase for them. But it, that increase could not happen unless they came together in one accord. And the reason I'm saying it like that. Is because if God needs the disciples to come together, you need to come together as a husband and wife. You got to lay aside your pride, got to lay aside your judgment. You got to recognize. You got to look for because um, First Corinthians uh, thirteen and and four through eight, he says you got to look for the good in the person. Well, if anybody I'm going to have to find good is my wife, because. God called us together. So he says in uh, uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 14, these all continue with one accord in prayer. Now we know that they're about to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but this is what's so significant about this. The Spirit of God could not move. Oh my God. Thank you, Father. The Spirit of God could not move the way he wanted until they all came together in one accord. And then it wasn't just for 40 minutes. It wasn't just for uh, uh, 40 hours. It was about 50 days. Remember, Pentecost is 50 days from um, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 50 means, Pentecost means 50. So it couldn't happen unless they both learn how to agree. And they had to agree for 50 days. So I'm, God is trying to get us to understand, you have something far more important than showing your pride, saying your little cuts and your little stabs at each other. You have to come together in one accord because you are about to receive the glory of God, the presence of God in such a way that can only come when you have stuck together for a long period of time where you're laboring before God, praying for each other. Because I, I, I said this before. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me. You need to make sure that you're praying for your spouse more than you're complaining 
about your spouse. Because if all you keep doing is talking about he doesn't clean his shoes, he doesn't wash his socks, he doesn't comb his hair, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't. Instead of, Lord, I thank you that I got a man that loves me no matter what. I got a man that knew me when I was a size 2, even though I'm a size 52, he's still there loving me. Let uh, <laughs> me stay away from that weight stuff. But the key is this. God wants you to understand this principle works when a couple, when a husband and wife comes together, the hand of God's got to move. When they come together in one accord, if he would do it for a large group, he would certainly do it for two. Because that two, God sees you as one. Because then we look at Acts chapter two, verse one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there's a move of God that's about to happen. God is about to move. And that's what God is trying to have. He wants you to have a Pentecostal relationship in your marriage. Where the power of God descends in your marriage and you come together. And oh my God, because you're together on one accord. You're together in unity. And remember my friend. My sister, my brother, the enemy is going to try and stop you, but you have a weapon of mass correction, the mighty glorious name of Jesus, the authority of God to speak his word and his truth and watch God show up on your behalf because he says, and on the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all, is that true in your marriage? Are you all together with one accord in one place? Spirit, soul, and body. And you know, I read verse 2 because I'm there. And suddenly, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. That's what he's telling us. Remember, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. So if a husband and wife come together in one accord, you can expect the same authority, the same glory in your marriage. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. Glory to God. Filling all the house where they were sitting. He's telling you that same fire, that same gifting, that same authority that operated on the day of Pentecost can happen in your marriage because you are in one accord with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Because 1 John says, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they always agree. And that's the same thing he wants from us. He wants us to always agree with our spouse. Well, she doesn't like red beans, but she likes pinto beans, so I guess I'm going to eat some pinto beans. Or I'm a, uh, when she's not cooking, I say, honey, I'm going to go to Popeye's and get me some of their red beans. Y'all get that tomorrow. But he says, and suddenly there was a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house. Lord, glory to God. Fill my house with your Holy Ghost presence. That's why I'm going to get along with my wife. I'm going to bite my tongue and tell him my tongue say, thus saith the Lord. And it says, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And listen, I, I'm going to go ahead and say verse 3 too. And their appearance unto them was cloven tongues like as a fire and it's set upon each of them. Don't you want this in your house? I know I do. Don't you want the Holy Spirit in your house? Don't you want him to show up? Oh my God. Glory to God. I want him in my house. And look. Look look what he says. And they were all filled. Are you and your husband? Are y'all all filled with the Holy Ghost? Because he's telling us one accord, in agreement, coming together. The Spirit of God will visit your relationship. 
And he says, and they spake with tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. I need, I desire, I hunger for the Holy Spirit to be between my wife and I in us together. That's what he's telling us in one accord. But be careful. I don't know if you've ever prayed in tongues or if you've ever flown in the spirit flown in the spirit because God in 1 Corinthians 12, he talks about nine gifts that are available for the body of Christ. That'll, but what I'm trying to get you to hear is that when God will give you a in, inside information, you have to quiet yourself. You have to quiet your thoughts because if not, oh, I see it. Uh, the overseer. Happy belated birthday, my brother. God bless you. You're looking great for a fellow. You must be in your 20s. Um, as I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm seeing things that are not there. I'm seeing Pastor Jackie. His name is not there. Well, I must be thinking of you, Pastor. I mean, overseer Jackie. God bless you. But he says, he says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterances. He wants to do that in your marriage. And this is what I like about it. Because if you drop down to verse 26 in Acts 2. I I like what he says. And they. Come on brother. Come on sister. You're going to have to quit talking about what's wrong and talk about what's right. Well, what's right in my marriage? God's living in it. God called us. God forgave us. God filled us with his spirit. God is moving on our behalf. Well, I could go on and on. God called us to be one. God called us to to be one that he can come in and invade our marriage. They can come in and take over our marriage. He can come in and ensure or make sure that we flow like a mighty, glorious, magnificent river. Now look what he says in verse 46. And they continue daily. That's what I want my marriage. I want us to continue daily being together in the Holy Spirit. Being on one accord. They continue daily with one accord in the temple. Verse 46. Breaking bread from the house to house. And did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. I like that. I like that the fact that we are getting along together. Because I know what it's like to argue over nothing. I I know what it's like to, to argue over nothing at all. Because you did not take the time to invite God in or let God have his way. And I just want God to use what he promised me. I want him to flow through me like a mighty river. I want him to have his way in my marriage. Because look what he says in Acts chapter 4, verse 24. Now I'm going to read verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all the chief priests and elders had said unto them, And when they heard that, they filled up their voice to God. This is what he said, with one accord. See, that's what God wants to hear from you. He wants y'all to work together. Can you work together? Can we work together? Yes, we can work together. He says, and they heard that they filled up their voice to God. With one accord. That's the word we're looking for. In one accord. And said, Lord, what thy God that God that has made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that, that that is in them. He said, I want to be in one accord with my wife. I want us to be in one accord because I need God to move mightily on my on our behalf. And so as I open my heart. To allow God in there that he can have, he can have what he wants or he can do what he promised. One accord. That's that's key. That's right, honey. 
Honey, we're going to be in one accord if she's listening. Because sometimes she listens. Doesn't tell me until later on. But then I remember in Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. Um, they were in one agreement. They just was in one agreement in the wrong way. The short version is um, Ananias lied about selling. Uh, I'm sorry. He sold the property which was his right to do or not do. But he lied about giving the money to the church. He didn't have to lie. All he did is say, look, I sold it. I'm going to give my tithes, but I'm going to keep the profit. And then his wife, uh, Sapphira, came right behind him. And uh, the uh, prophet asked her, did she agree with what he did? And she said, yeah. And she, they both died instantly. But what drew me to this scripture was what, what happened in verse 12. After they buried them, after they said a great fear came over them. But listen what they said. This is what I'm looking for. Because if you get this, you'll see what God's wanting to say about a husband and wife. Acts 5 and 12. And the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders. I want signs and wonders. Wrought or worked among the people. Why? And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Do you get what I'm saying? Because they were in agreement with the word of God, the spirit of God, and they were in agreement with to each other, God could work signs and wonders through them. He doesn't change. God doesn't change. You got to look to see what he's saying. If you would swallow your pride and get along with each other because you married each other, that's why um, next month it'll be 43 years. And when we would do marriage encounters, we would have people bring their um, uh, wedding pictures. Why? Because I wanted them to see that was one day that y'all could agree. You may not agree every day after that. But I want you to see that it's possible that you can see that you can agree. Because remember, it's the little things, the little disagreements, the little arguments, the little things. Um, because some create an argument just so they can leave the house. Come on, don't play me. Oh, you go storming out the door because you really want to go to the sports bar and watch the game. You don't want to be bothered. You want to watch with a bunch of people that care about. But you got to be careful. It's the little things. And I don't want little things to keep me from having the great things, the mighty things that God wants to do. So if I got to put a muzzle on my mouth to say what my heart says, not what my head thinks or how I feel, I will put a muzzle on my mouth. Because I want to operate, like God says, in one accord. Come on now. In agreement. I want my wife and I to be in agreement. That's right. One accord where we are joined together in the holy matrimony. Agreeing and receiving the mighty wisdom and the glory of God. That God's showing up in our lives because we are in one accord. The spirit of signs and wonders will flow in our marriage because we are in one accord. Because you're not going to want to read where we're going from here. Philippians 2 verse 1. Because God's wanting you to understand. I made this and I'm the one that can make it work. And he says what well, in Proverbs 15 and 1, a soft answer will turn away wrath. That means giving a kind word to each other, even though the other one is rude. Because I know I've been there, been there, been there, wrote a book about it, had to throw it away because it wasn't worth reading. I've been there where I let my alligator mouth overload my hummingbird behind where I said something I had no business, I didn't really mean, but I was mad, I was angry, I was trying to hurt the other person. And then you know, if you think that's bad, try and ask them to forgive you. Wow. <laughs> that's why I try not to say it, because 
You, you know when those words came out, oh Lord, I done messed up. And then once you made those, those words, then you got to go back and say, I'm sorry. Like Mr. Brown, the character on uh, some of Tyler Perry plays and TV shows. He said, I'm sorry. No, I'd rather not say it. You know, for me, I'd rather avoid the accident than have one and then try to figure out my way out of it. But look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. King James Version. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, and if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies. Now, Bible in basic English, I think this gives you better insight to the same scripture. If then there is any comfort in Christ. Yes, there is. Christ is a word that's full of comfort. Any help given by love. Do you realize everything God did was by love? And faith works by love. Everything God did is based on him loving you. That's why you you even, because remember what Jesus did when they, uh, when they, um, when they stretched him high and hung him high, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because he also said, I could call down a legion of angels and shut all this down. But he says, Father, I'm going through this because I want to follow your will. Because he tells us that. He says, nevertheless, not my will, Father, but your will. And it's God's will to be respectful to each other. And, I, and it keeps coming up. I don't, I'm not going to be concerned that my spouse disrespects God or disrespects me because God told me to do it his way and either my spouse going to change or my spouse is going to be replaced. I know this on good authority. That's why I had to change. That's why I'm not afraid to do it God's way because God's going to make it right. And I can tell, I can see the effects of the word of God operating in my marriage by the way we communicate. We're not perfect. I'm not trying to tell you, oh, we wake up every day as a day at the beach. But we know when God is working. And that's what all I'm trying to do. Let, let the spirit of God work in your marriage. Bible and basic English. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any help given by love, any uniting of hearts in the Holy Spirit, any loving mercies and pity. Have, have sympathy. That's what he says in the complete Jewish version. Philippians 2 and 1. Have compassion. You know, you don't know where they're coming from. You know, a lot of times, you know, you see people maybe jump at noises. Well, you don't know what happened in their life that why they're that way. And you in the marriage, and some of them may not know, because um, my my wife never liked the way her father treated her mother, because he 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 had um, he was an alcoholic. Now he would work, but he would have issues. And he had been gone, and she'd given her life back to the Lord, and it'd been many years. But she said, God said I hadn't totally forgiven him in a certain area, and she had to release him. I'm. Look, I had to ask God to forgive me for so much because I've made so many mistakes. But the complete Jewish version says that scripture, Philippians 2 and 1. The Messiah, any comfort flowing from love, any fellowship with me in the spirit, or any compassion and sympathy. See, all this has got to be done in the spirit. You can't do this in the flesh, because in the flesh, you're going to cuss them out. <laughs> in the flesh, you're going to tell them how T.I. is. In the flesh, you're going to tell them, say, look, I should have married Simity Sam, because Simity Sam was going to treat me better than you. No, you got to talk in the spirit. And that means you got to let your spirit that's connected to God have your way in your mouth. New Living Translation says it like this. This. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Wow. Let me tell you now. You talk about something that's difficult on your soul and your, 
and your flesh is instead of cutting them off, find a way to encourage them in the word of God. That's what he's saying. Do you encourage your spouse, even though what they said or what they did has angered you? Remember, quit trying to impress your spouse and impress God. Quit trying to impress others, but impress God. He says, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Yes, there is. Any comfort from his love? Yes, there is. That's why I can afford, I have so much of God's love in me, I can afford to share it with you, even though I don't like the way you treated me. Because I have so much love from God, God always takes care of me. Any fellowship together in the spirit. Because see, now that's powerful what he's saying here in New Living Translation. Is what you're saying, or the words that are coming out of your mouth, do they come from a place where the Holy Spirit is? A place where you fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Because this, this statement keeps resonating in me. Because I don't want to be that person. I can see what's wrong in everybody else, but can't see it in me. I can tell everybody else what they're doing wrong, but I can't see through the word of God, the spirit of God, what I'm doing wrong. I don't want to be that person. Uh, Yes, God will reveal to me when people are doing something wrong, but I want to tell me too. I don't want to have to wait till I've totally, completely embarrassed myself or made a fool of myself or have to ask everybody to forgive me. Um, and I deal with children and some of these children have issues. They have diagnoses. They have exceptionalities. And I got to remember, I got to come from the place where the spirit of God is in me from the spirit of love, not the spirit of hate, lust, anger. Oh, I got a lot of things. If I let it, I could be angry about. But that's not going to help me. He says, any fellowship together in the Holy Spirit. Because when you come about where the Holy Spirit is, you're coming from a whole nother dimension. You're coming from the kingdom of Almighty God. And you can't think this. You can't feel it. You got to say it from your heart. Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Wow. You ever been around somebody when they speak? I have a coarse voice. But when they speak into you, they speak into you with such a love and a compassion towards you. You know, I know that's why a lot of people are drawn to my wife. Because when my wife speaks, you can hear the compassion in her voice. And you can hear how she'll sit there with you and try and help you understand how to thus follow the Lord. But me, I have to work on that. Why is that? Because if I'm telling you the truth... And, you know, I'm like, Lord, am I saying it correctly? Am I misrepresenting the scriptures or something? Because I'm telling you the solution because the Bible is answers. But the problem is you can't make the people do it. They got to be willing. He told you in first, I mean, in first chapter Isaiah and verse 19, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That principle works all through the Bible. And so whenever I find myself in adversity or difficulty, I say, Lord, help me if I'm missing it. But if I'm following you, show me, uh, give me the guidance that I'll stay the course. Verse 2, Philippians 2 and 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye may be like-minded. Yes, Lord, my wife and I need to be in agreement Spirit, soul, and body. Whoo, Lord, you talk about a problem if you and your wife are in different headspace. Oh, my God. She trying to go left, you trying to go right. You trying to sit down, she standing up. No, God, we got to find like-minded. I, I mentioned this before. I'm not really that, you know, I, I would like space age, modern day furniture if I had to pick it. But my wife is more of a traditional furniture. Well, it doesn't mean that much to me. If it makes her happy, it makes me ecstatic. So I'm not going to sit there and go into uh, uh, Ethan Allen's or uh, uh, Thomas 
Thomasville place and tell her what to buy. I'm going to let her use her taste. Because I'm fine with it because I'm going to like it as long as it's comfortable. It looks good. I'm happy. Bible and Basic English, verse 2. Make my joy complete by being of the same mind. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that we can find a place that we can agree. Having the same love, my God. Being in harmony of one mind. Lord, I thank you that my wife and I are complete of the same mind, having the same love, being in harmony and of one mind. Because we're in this together. We need God to move. We are in this in one accord. Complete Jewish version says that scripture, Philippians 2 and 2. Complete my joy by having a common purpose and a common love by being one in heart and in mind. Lord, I thank you that we are united together. Oh, you love the message translation, verse 2. Then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited. Uh, it says friends, but we talking about spouses. That we're deeply committed to the things of God. That I honor her and she honors me. And then he says in uh, chapter t- 2, verse 2, New Living Translation. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Yes, Father. My wife and I, we will agree. Wholeheartedly. And the place that we find to agree is the word of God. Because she may want a hamburger, I may want chicken. She may want Mexican, I may want Italian. But we agree on the word as an absolute truth, an absolute decision. Make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Loving one another and working together with one mind and one purpose. That's what my wife and I are to do. We to work together in love. Uh, together, one mind and one purpose. And then that reminds me there's some projects she has that I got to work with on it. I'm not for it, but I, I'm going to do it because I love her. And I love God. And I love what happens when I respond to her in the language she likes. I mean, I'd be interested in in, uh, <laughs> um, in Louisiana, you had to cut a lot of grass. I mean, we got grass growing everywhere, in the streets, everywhere. If you, <laughs> uh, and uh, so you had to cut the lawn a lot. Uh, unlike a lot of places in the world, we have to cut the grass at least uh, nine months out the year. Really, you could almost do 10, depending on where you're, uh, 10 or 11 months out the year. And we get snow occasionally. But grass, we get all the time. And um, I remember when I first, uh, when I used to, um, first got my first ride in lawnmower. And that's around the times the weed whackers came out. I had it all. I had a hedger and all like that. And I would hedge and weed whack first. And then I would I would use the uh, riding lawnmower. Well, that was the fun part. Well, she came outside wanting to drive the lawnmower. I said, well, look, if you're not going to weed eat, you're not going to hedge. <laughs> Don't come out here with a fun part on the ride lawnmower. So she showed me she quit doing it. <laughs> dumb, dumb, dumb. Pray for me. Well, I thank God we in another situation. We got, we got some people that come out and take care of that for us. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also in the things of others. In other words, be mindful of them. And that's what he's saying in verse 5. Let us, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Is that your truth? Are you always trying to, oh, <laughs> I know petty people like that. All right, you ate two peanuts, I want two peanuts. You ate five popcorns, I want five popcorns. Hold on, don't you tell No, I want to make her happy. So if it takes giving her ten popcorns, let her have it. I'll eat the one or I'll go eat peanuts. I want her happy. I get joy out of making my spouse happy. Complete English version says verse 5 like this. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. In other words, take on the same persona 
I love you. I forgive you. I'm here for you. I want to be there for you. I want to put myself in a position that I can do exactly what you need done so we can be who we want to be. You know, I I don't think I read this one. Going back to verse 3. Don't be selfish. This is New Living Translation. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as the better than yourself. In other words, it's okay to be humble. It's okay to swallow your pride. It's okay to put yourself in agreement with what God is doing. Remember these foundational scriptures. We use that to base our prayer that we pray. Well, we uh, Each Tuesday at high noon, we have high noon prayer. And we base that on Matthew 18, uh, verse 19. He says, again, I tell you, I say unto you, that if any two, the greatest two to be together is a husband and wife, shall agree on earth. Remember, we're working on, it's the little things. It's the little foxes. Get rid of the little foxes. Come together in one accord. Why? So you can have the power and the glory of God operating in your marriage. That's what you want, isn't it? (coughs) Excuse me. That if the two of you shall agree on earth, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. I want God to give me what I ask for. Amen. If I got to give him my time and pray, I want, I want results. When I pray according to the word of God and I honor God and follow his instructions, I'm looking not only for what I ask for, I'm looking for what he said in Ephesians 3 and 20, the exceeding abundantly above all. And I can clearly say he has done that in my marriage. Because we have given our marriage over to God, we've experienced the exceeding abundantly above all in our marriage because we have put our trust in the Lord. Is that your truth? That's my truth. I'm putting my trust in the Lord. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Let me read to you from the Amplified. Again, I say to you that two, you, two believers on earth, is that you? Agree, that is, are of one mind and in harmony. I'm telling you, men and women who are married to each other, it is important for y'all to lay aside your perks, your turks, your quirks, and come together in unity. You got too much at stake. You got the opportunity to be a card with the Holy Spirit. You got the privilege of signs and wonders flowing through you. We got the opportunity for the gifts of the Spirit to flow. That whatever you ask for God, it will show up because you lay it aside all your quirks, your twerks, your lurks, that you can come together in harmony. About anything that they ask within the will of God. That's what we're saying. It's the will of God if you to be in one accord. If you're wondering, that's his will. He wants you to be in one accord. So that means you don't go off because you didn't have your way. You go off because you come in. <laughs> I just talked about this guy I used to work with many, many years ago. And this, I think it was before microwaves. Uh, but uh, one of the salespeople liked these sandwiches uh, uh, from, a, uh, I think it was McDonald's. And so he knew, the, he knew his boss liked one. And so he got him one. And he brought it to him in the morning. Well, the boss was busy doing whatever he was doing in between, whatever he was doing in the morning. But by the time the boss got to it, the sandwich was cold. Instead of him, we did have an oven there. Instead of him go place it in the oven and warm it up, he got mad and threw the sandwich on the side of the wall in the office. And then we had all, back then, they, they got far more advanced, but we had our keys in the uh, all the keys to all the cars in a locked file cabinet. And he couldn't get in it. He got so mad, he put the file cabinet on the back of a truck 
and just threw it down on the ground trying to get it open. He was furious. And we just said, Lord, help him. But he's a good car man. But I think he finally taking some meds. He certainly needs it. He says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, it's touching anything that they shall ask. This is why I got to be in accord with my wife. This is why I can't be having no foolishness. I got to shut my mouth down and I got to get along with my wife. Because he says, in harmony, that we'll be in the will of God. And it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Amplified, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus, meaning together as followers, which are believers, I am there amongst them. My dear brother, my dear sister, you need to have God in your marriage. He needs to be the most seen, the most heard, the most talked about in your marriage. And if you ever hear me talking, I give God the glory. Yes, we did the work, but he did the work before we got here. He's the one that has kept us together. He's the he's the glue. <laughs> yeah, my class reunion is coming up, and uh, our shop teacher was Mr. LeBlanc. He said, he said, got to get the glue. I said, okay, Mr. LeBlanc, he said, got to get the glue to glue the board. If you don't get the glue to glue the board, the board won't hold. <laughs> I said, all right, man, Shaq, we got to get the glue to glue the board, or if the board won't hold. So get the glue. <laughs> And you got to remember, he was a Cajun. But I thank God for y'all being a part of what God has opened the door for us to do. And, and we kind of the privilege because this door was open out of the ministry of Four More Radio with Dr. Uh, Lori and Overseer Jackie Evans. And I thank God for them. And now you can hear them on Four More. You can also hear them on uh uh, in him on four more radio and four more speaker. I thank God for people like that. Just open the doors for us. And then, of course, my dear friend, Pastor Dennis Stephen Hamilton. He's my encourager. He's the one that also opened the door. He's the one that introduced me to all these wonderful, gracious, God-loving, God-fearing people. But I need to say this before I go. In John 3 and 7, the Bible clearly says, Jesus said that you must be born again. Now, you're born to this earth, but then God wants you to be born spiritually. And for that to happen, it's a prayer that's based on Romans chapter 10, verse 9. So I'm going to ask everybody under the sound of my voice, if you would honor God, bow your heads, close your eyes, think about what Jesus has done for you, and repeat this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe God sent you to this earth. You suffered on the cross. You were persecuted for me. You died on the cross for me. But on the third day, God raised you from the grave. And you're now seated at the right hand of the Father. And now, according to the word of God, I decree and declare that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. And now, according to the word of God, I am forever known as a born again believer. Well, praise the Lord. Glory to God. We welcome you into the kingdom of God. God is rejoicing because you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And he's rejoicing at your end. That is the second part that you should pray whether you, um, uh, even after you're born again, it's based on 1 John 1 and 9. God put in his provisions that you don't have to pay for sin. That if you ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you. And that's based on 1 John 1 and 9. So repeat after me and say, Father God, you promised me that if I ask you to forgive me of anything, I've done against you, my fellow man, or even myself. You're faithful and just to forgive me. So by faith in the name of Jesus, I'm totally, completely forgiven in Jesus' holy name. Now that means God has forgiven you because some people think, well, I just go out and act a fool. No, you need to be cautious about what you're doing. 
But that prayer is that you're forgiven by God. You may still have to pay for whatever you did, the damages you occurred or the crimes you committed. You may still have to pay. But remember, now that you belong to God, he will give you the strength and the character and the ability to get through what you're dealing with. And then now, if you a part, not part of a local church, you need to ask God, I need to be a part of a local church. I need you to help me find a place that loves you, loves your word, will teach me the word, teach me how to love you so I can grow up to be the man or woman of God you call me to be. And I promise you, God will do it. Now I'm going to ask you a favor. If you just gave your life to the Lord, you can inbox me on Facebook, you can email me at pastor at prevailingministries.com. You can also call our prayer line at 318-215-6399. I also want to put this out there for you. If you having thoughts of hurting yourself or hurting innocent people, I'm going to invite you to call the Suicide Watch Line. They got some highly decorated, highly trained people to help you talk you talk you and guide you the way you can get some help, the way you don't hurt yourself or hurt other than innocent people. And that number is 800-273-8255. Well, I certainly appreciate your time. What a privilege and honor to be able to share the gospel of the living God. And I thank you, uh, Pastor Dennis Stephen Hamilton, for telling me to preach the word, brother. I appreciate that. Now, you can find us all over Facebook under Prevailing Faith Ministries. You can find us under YouTube under Prevailing Faith Ministries. We're on 24-7 there. And also, we have a high noon prayer every Tuesday, Central Standard Time, where we pray for the needs of the community. You can watch that on Facebook and YouTube. And then we have Wednesday Night Live at uh, 7 p.m. Wednesday nights. You can watch that on YouTube and Facebook. Facebook. And you can also get our Sunday morning service. So we're trying to get the word out. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have. <laughs> Forgive me. We're also featured on Four More Radio. Praise the Lord. And Holy Spirit Broadcast Network. So we got these vehicles and these avenues open up to us. And we're just trying to share the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you. We pray this has been a blessing to you. And we'll be back on air next Monday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Remember what the word says. Walk by faith, not by sight. Pastor Brown and Prevailing Faith Ministries want to thank you for tuning in and welcome you to email your questions, comments, and prayer requests. Pastor at PrevailingMinistries.com Once again, this has been another episode of the Prevailing Faith Broadcast with your host, Pastor Charles E. Brown, who reminds you to walk by faith, not by sight. And God bless you.